Welcome to the Cosmic Cafe Show, where the paranormal is normal. My name is Eric Brown, and I'll be your host and server. For today's daily special at the cafe, we're brewing up the question of Nibiru, often called Planet X. It is near our sun again, and possibly will it even nix Earth? To help us answer these questions today is our returning friend, Mr. Robert Evans, who many of you may remember in season one, he abruptly left the show. Take a look. You mentioned that slide number nine that you just showed. That, yes. That's a first time exclusive that you've ever shared that. Exactly. In public, right? And some of these other ones, uh, the slide number 10. Okay, gentlemen, yeah. we're gonna have to break what, this up. What, uh, who are Wait. you? Are you uh, Robert Henry Evans Jr.? Yes, Ex I am. What, what's going on? I'm gonna have to ask you to come with me, please, answer some questions. Who, what's, what's going on I, here? It's okay, we'll take you down to the agency. Sorry, sir, uh, it's on a need to know basis. Well, come with me, sir. What? Well, <laughs> uh, Bob, what's going on? Oh my gosh, well, uh, I guess, um, I, I, folks, I'm sorry. I. I <laughs> so Bob, wow, what an experience that was. Oh my yes, gosh. Yes, it was. So I, I always understood once you're taken by the men in black, that's it. You're gone. You disappeared. There's uh, no more of you. So what? Tell me what. I didn't have the correct, inf I didn't have the correct permission. I thought I did at the time. Well, but, you were uh, sending out leaked NASA photos. Right. Yeah. And they, uh, they took me aside and they made it very difficult for a while. Uh -huh. uh, you look a little thinner? A little kinda. bit, yes. Yeah, you like, uh, you know, had a nice little workout there at Camp MIB. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't really talk about that. I was told not to, so. You got new glasses? Yeah, they, they yeah. gave me the glasses so I can actually see a lot of their operatives, which are actually walking down the streets all the time. They have their own kind of like cloaking shields. Are you sure they're just not tracking you with the glasses? Did you get those scanned to make sure they're clean? I've, I have, they, their technology is just something else. I have yeah. no way of knowing. If, they probably are. They pro yeah, they who probably knows, right? They probably are keeping a track on me since yeah. I was leaking, leaking all the information. Well, let's just hope they don't find you here and arrest me this time. Well, supposedly I was given permission by Enki okay. to show uh, leaked NASA photographs of what's coming down right now. And that's with relation to Nibiru. Yes, Nibiru has been seen next to our sun now for several months, actually several years, but it has been always been debunked as being lens flare or just faulty digital cameras. But and as of last November, uh, I was able to get some images from my friends where it showed the wings and last, uh, so that was clearly the first images last November showing this second sun-like object with the wings on it. Um, that's uh, that's where Enki comes from too. Yes. Is uh, from Enki Enlil. Yeah, uh, their their half sister. So you cleared Nima. everything with Enki. It's it's good I, to go. I was I think I didn't see Enki himself, but well, I well, did of get not, yeah. what permission to. Right. Because they want the people to know about this thing coming in. They don't want them to panic. Right, sure. You know, they, uh, it's going to be somewhat slow as it grows larger and larger. See, the problem with this is that everything in our solar system orbits counterclockwise. Uh, yeah. And every time it comes through, we're not always in the same spot in our orbit as it goes out around our sun goes back out. Oh, okay, because it's got a 3,000 year cycle It works cycle out to about 3,640 years. Okay. Because its last visit was somewhere between 1558 and 1600 BCE. Okay. I was okay. able to pin that down by the ancient tales by Ipower, I-P-U-W-E-R, Okay. Any of your people can Google that. And his accounts were very clear that there was ash falling in Egypt oh. as the slaves and evildoers were leaving Egypt. 
Okay. And the only volcano back then was the ancient island of Thera. Okay, okay. Now called Santorini. Right. So most of the knowledgeable people, they've all put its explosion somewhere between 1550 to 1600. So that's a good ballpark in time. Sure. Uh, Ippower described the destroyer, which okay. is also in the Holy Bible. Okay. It was in the Egyptian skies for about a month, but when it was really at its height, it was being seen for about 10 to maybe 20 days. A little bit hard to pin that down because he didn't give any times between the different stuff. And uh, so the, uh, on their leaving Egypt, they heard a tremendous roar. Okay. Yeah. Which just deadened everything they had heard before then. The thousand trumpets sound in the air, which right. I've been able to pin down to Aurora Borealis. Oh. So the Aurora Borealis had been dragged down that far south. Right. Sure. And that sound, another person I'd heard on a video said that's the sound he heard. When they had, when he saw the aurora borealis, oh. so that was probably the ten thousand trumpets that they were all hearing during this time. Oh, that makes sense. Hey, uh, I want to make sure. Uh, I remember on our first show together when you came by the cafe, mm -hmm. we had a bunch of slides, and I think yes. we ran short on time. So I know today you brought a bunch of slides as well. So yes, I want to make sure uh, we don't shortchange our audience this time. And, well, uh, do you want us to bring up the first yeah. slide? The slide, slide number zero. zero. Okay. Uh, we'll talk NASA about that. imaged this with the South Pole Telescope back in 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. Now, someone or two people that did work at the South Pole Telescope leaked a lot of this information, and they suddenly just disappeared. Uh, they they weren't there anymore. Right. So, I've been able to come across this information. The sl first slide shows a brown dwarf sun star right. with at least five of its seven planets. Okay, and, that's what we're looking at. And, and that's what you're looking at there on slide zero. Okay. Now, NASA took more images of this. They actually showed Nibiru itself, uh, which is uh, slide three. That's a direct, NASA never showed where they were taking this image from, so I can't tell you what camera it was, mm -hmm. but all the black lines, they point to the moons orbiting Nibiru. Oh, okay. 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 Now, NASA already knew this stuff because back uh, in the mid-1990s, uh, a Vatican U.S government Israeli space probe was launched from Area 51. It was oh. human alien construction. Now, did they launch that with a rocket the, or did they... With the Aurora did? spacecraft. Okay, maybe uh, briefly tell people what that is just so the they Aurora know. The Aurora spacecraft has been seen on a lot of people's videos where it has puff, 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 puff of these clouds way high up in the atmosphere. This spacecraft went all the way out to Nibiru, way past Pluto, orbited Nibiru, and came back, downloaded all of the information to a secret Jesuit base okay. up on a HARP facility up in Alaska. And huh. part of this information was later leaked during the late, early 2000s. Okay, okay. Um, so this... I think one of your slides there uh, actually has slides showing that's slide number five, where these shows the plant Nibiru itself. Okay. 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 And this was from a, a video that a friend, of, well, at least I, I thought he was mostly just leaking stuff out. See, the, the secret Jesuit priest, he went to Christopher Barbato over in Italy because Christopher okay. Barbato had UFO-type articles and stuff. So 
he told him everything because the, the governments around the world were not talking about this stuff and they wanted the government, you know, all the you know, Russia, United States, Canada, you know, all these people, they wanted to start warning the populace about what's coming down real soon. Okay. You see, all this went back to 1954 when Eisenhower and a hand-picked team of Western scientists talked with three alien races there at Murak Airfield, which is now Edwards Air Force Base. Okay. I think so, we talked about that a little bit in the a first little bit, yes. time and you then stopped by. The second visit was in 1955, so the Vatican knew all about this. Uh, slide number four, these are actually microwave images showing Nibiru. Oh, okay. So you have the infrared image, which was one of the other slides you showed, and then the real nice image, slide number three. So it's there. They knew it was coming in, but leaked information in two, uh, 2009 from NASA sources allowed a PowerPoint presentation to be created of eight slides. Oh, okay. Which covered it from 2009 to December, 30, December 21st, 2012. And they showed that Nibiru was projected to be at least 20 astronomical units away from orbiting between Jupiter and Mars. Now, uh, real quick, uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, December 2012. Yes. And actually when Dr. Sasha and Janet were here, uh, they were talking about a shift change on December 12th, 2012, uh, like a shift in energy and such. And I'm wondering, is Nibiru uh, responsible for shifting that energy that they're talking about? Dr. Sasha Lesson and his wife Janet, they're fantastic. They know a lot more about this than I do, but I can only tell about what I found during my research. Right, right. That various YouTube videos uh, were saying that it had been slowed down for a while. Okay. Which I can't really understand. How can you slow down a planet? That is pretty but, interesting. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, friends of mine, I've showed them the, the images, and when they looked at all the stuff astronomically, they said this thing should be here possibly by June, July, August. Of this year? Of this year. Okay. Between 2015 to 2017. Okay. It should be right within that ballpark of time. Okay. So I just know that I've been watching all, the, all this information coming out, and I've been watching this second sun-like object being filmed photographed down in the southern regions of our planet for the last two or three years. It's all been debunked. Right. And up until last November, that's what I thought it was. And when I saw the wings appear on either side of it, I said, I have to go back and read more about what... So the Colbrin was actually the one that had more information on this. And I had to go back and reread a lot of their stuff. And it said that it, was, it would be hidden by our sun. So it, it, okay. our sun would be kind of playing games with it, going back and forth. Huh. So I started at least mentioning that on several radio shows because I'm, I'm a, a constant guest with uh, Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet on their show. Yeah, every yeah. Friday night. I've heard you on their show, and and in fact, actually, um, you know, just so the audience are, uh, knows, if they hadn't seen the article yet on the on the website, but yes. I've posted a bunch of photos and information that you provided oh, yes. about it uh, the end of last year. So, and then other friends around the planet start sending in their photographs of this thing in their skies. Yeah, like China, China, one. Germany. Italy, Japan, the uh, east coast of the United States, a friend up in the state of Washington, she's been taking infrared images of it with her own camera. Okay. So I know it's a real thing. 
Other people down in Mexico were, were seeing it on webcams and mm -hmm. different resorts, seeing it over the Pacific as the sun sets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this thing is slowly growing larger and larger in our skies. Right. And no one over here is talking about it. That's that disinformation project that you know, uh, North America and Canada is part of. Right, right. Uh, one of the channel, the TV channel up in um, Sacramento, California, mm -hmm. they actually had a, a video where they were seeing this planet-like thing at night. Oh, okay. And the two anchors, uh, I tried to get a hold of them, but who knows how many people had, tr you know, they knew what it was or whatever. Sure, sure. And uh, this channel from from Sacramento, they just never got back to me on this. You know, so I tried to tell them that's the real thing, because right. this thing is being seen. The chemtrails that I know a lot of people are following, because they see a high-flying plane dumping these huge chemtrails in the sky, not yeah. like a contrail, which where it quickly dissipates and disappears. The chemtrails, they actually f f fill up the sky. Right, uh, right. One, one day down in Pacifica, where I live, Pacific, Pacifica, California, there were at least six airplanes, and it was clear skies. Yeah. And they were all going from, like, Santa Cruz northwards. And by the time I came back after picking up my wife, the sky was just all clouded, where these chemtrails had just filled up the skies. I think that might have been the ones, or I saw very similar ones that I tweeted out and posted on the, the show's website uh, on Facebook, uh, the uh, chemtrails, and they did that same sort of thing. And, they, and it, it, by the time I walked out to the bay and walked back, the sky was clouded up because it had just slowly spread and it and was like these chemtrails are hiding Nibiru in our daytime skies at first everyone oh. thought it was the planet Venus or Mars right Venus would be first in the um, uh, just before dawn, or dawn just or before dawn sunrise and, yeah that's a <laughs> the, I, know, know. I had to check this out completely right. everyone was no it's sad it's sad don't believe it yeah yeah and uh, all of the astronomy programs showed Venus and Mars fading from view right. at sunrise. And this thing was very clearly being seen after sunrise. Yeah, okay. Over in uh, so the... It's much brighter, exactly, much bigger. Exactly, exactly. Uh, over in the Middle East, friends over in Egypt were sending their photographs of this scene being seen after sunrise and then at sunset. Well, uh, could this... Uh I don't want to get too biblical, but it just occurred to me uh, when Christ was born, wasn't there the, sky, the light in the sky that stayed visible day and night? I saw a recent uh, program where they were talking about that, that star. Right. And it didn't seem to fit any uh, thing that they could figure out. Right. Because, yes, it was a star like thing, but it had also changed course to be right above that area. Right, so right. I don't think it was a star at all. I think it was one of their ships. Oh, it wasn't Nibiru then? No. Oh, okay. No, Nibiru. But it kind of gave a similar effect to what you're talking about now with Nibiru. Well, okay. Because you're saying it's more visible when in Venus the, disappears. And... In the Colbrin, there's a part where it talks about the building of the Ark, uh -huh. Noah's Ark. It tells how it was built three stories high and split right down the middle in the center, so it made six uh, stories. Sure. And what actually went into it, how many people went into it, and it sounds almost like a lost part from the lost book of Enki by oh. Zachariah Sitchin. Okay. So that part was not, because in that book, tablets number nine, number 10, they go into why Nibiru, its, or, its orbit was altered by the seven, meaning from the Earth out to Pluto. They oh, had a very oh, okay. rare alignment, which brought it in closer towards Mars and then towards the Earth than it had ever been before oh, for okay. countless centuries. And the Anunnaki knew what it was going to do. On one go, uh, passage, 
it damaged the atmosphere on Mars and here on Earth with a lot of asteroid type stuff. Okay. And then the next passage, they knew it would cause a tremendous flood. Oh, okay. And that's where Noah and his flood was linked to forever after with the, the Holy Bible. So in their text, they clearly said the destroyer oh. was seen in the skies. Then all the stars shifted to new positions. The sun and the moon had new rising and new setting areas. Hmm. Yeah. And that was all kind of, yeah, okay, no problem. And two authors years ago, uh, D.S. Allen and J.B. Dallaire, they came out with a book called Cataclysm. Oh. And hopefully you'll show a picture of their book. Cataclysm. Uh, compelling evidence of a cosmic ca catastrophe in 9500 BC. Oh. Which anyone that's followed a lot of this ancient, that's almost the same time of the end of Atlantis. And for other oh, people, really? exactly. Oh. And that other people know that at some time around 12,900 years ago, something happened in North America, which wiped away all of the large carnivores, saber-toothed tiger, the, the big uh, cave bears, uh, the mastodons. And but you're not talking about no. the asteroid that hit Earth and killed the dinosaurs a million years that was 65 ago. million years ago. Yeah, that's, that's way a, too far back. Okay, so that's definitely no. Because the Anunnaki first came here about 450,000 years ago. They created man to be their worker uh, hunting for the gold deposits. And then something happened where they suddenly let man have their own civilization and they went into the background hmm. where they worked through priests and priestesses. So. Okay, that's 12,000 something years ago. Before we get too far off the reservation, I just want to remind you about your slides. Yes. Because <laughs> I think we've covered about three or four of the seven or eight that you brought. So exactly. I don't want you to finish when we run out of time and you go, dog on it. So I just, if you did want to. Yeah. Yeah, the leaked information in 2009 allowed slide number one to be created. Slide number one? And this okay. is where they again showed the brown dwarf star and six planets to the right of where our system is. Now, if anyone has followed uh, the nemesis theories and stuff, there was actually a nice video you can find on YouTube. It's called Nemesis, Our Sun's Evil Twin, which was okay. put out years ago. And they clearly show a brown dwarf's orbit is much larger than everything in our system. So it's actually around our system, just like it's shown there. Another uh, astronomical program called Astro Viewer uh -huh. clearly shows our system, but if you click on the button where it says Dwarf Planets and look for Sedna uh -huh. and click on that, it has a tremendous orbit all around ours. So Sedna... Didn't you bring a slide or something that showed yes, that? Yes, I, I did. I think it's six or seven. There are two of them that we had. Yes. Um, Where I it actually uh, shows the, the orbit. Yeah. And that's slide number seven. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Well. So you see this massive orbit, a circular orbit around, and here's our solar system down in one corner of it. That is actually shown in the video, Nemesis, Our Son's Evil Twin. Oh, okay. Whether they knew that or not, that's how they also portrayed it. Oh, okay. Uh, so this Nemesis, it has seven planets, has its own Oort cloud around it. Okay. And it orbits around our system outside our Oort cloud. Okay. But planet number six comes into our system and orbits between Jupiter and Mars. That's probably why it was called the planet of the crossing. Crossing oh. from there into here and then back out. So all this stuff, a lot of people knew it was coming from the images from 2007 that were leaked out in 20, 2009. So, These were leaked out of NASA? Leaked okay. out of NASA. All right, you're uh, not going to 
you got all that cleared, right? You yes. said you got it cleared by Anki, right? I sure hope I did. <laughs> okay, okay. So, don't need and, any more and then, surprises. And, and then a lot of people now have been following it, this thing next to our sun all around the planet. Okay. So we know it's coming in. The news media won't talk about it, no matter what we tell them, what I try to tell them. And we know that it's also being followed. A lot of these news people, they're actually following what's happening there on Facebook. Because uh, I've heard different rumors that various TV stations and radio, they're actually following what I've been doing. Because I'm one of the few people that are willing to stick my neck out and oh, show okay. and talk about this stuff. Uh, some other people have been on other radio shows and they've been uh, also talking about this, but from different points of view. Oh, okay. Okay, so hey, Bob, uh, I see that we're getting really short on time. Yeah. Uh, why don't you give us your website so people know where to get all your information, your research, how to get in touch with you. Sure. Yeah. Starshipsaroundthesun.com, starshipsaroundthesun.com, on Facebook, Robert H. Evans, Jr. And they can link to that from your uh, your main website as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Well, I'll also see about getting a link up on the, my show, the Cosmic Cafe site as well for you. So. All right, gentlemen. I'm going to have to put a stop oh, to this. God, not again. again. You said you had permission. And he gave, my, gave me permission to de debunk. Well, you know that I take... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Brown, please remain seated. God, you're remain strong. Seated. <laughs> and you know that I take my orders from Matt and Lil. No, so I'm going to have to ask you to step us step up, please, and get behind the chair. Oh, jeez, not again. Well, I hope you know the drill. Turn again. around, face forward. Get your hands. Oh, gosh. Bob. All right. You told me everything is going to be cool. Let's go do this again. Cold. Oh, gosh. Come this way, sir. All right. Well, folks, I guess that's uh, the end of my show with Bob. I guess good thing he got his website out information. But I don't know if he's going to be able to respond to any of your emails or what have you. Who knows when he's going to get back from Camp MIB. But with that, that is our show anyways. Uh, so please uh, support your local public access TV station and thank them for carrying the Cosmic Cafe show. Let them know how much you appreciate it. If you Also, many of them need volunteers to help their station. So please, the stations that are carrying our show, please support them also with your own volunteerism. They definitely appreciate it. And with that, CosmicCafeShow.com is the website for all the resources to our stations and to uh, people like Bob and his websites. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day. Thanks a lot. Well, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Just sit here and... Uh...